everybody, it's Miss Audrey from the Fairfield County District Library at our downtown main location. And today we're going to be talking about art, yay! And we're going to be doing art with something that you probably have at home, which is tin foil, good old fashioned tin foil. Any kind of tin foil works. I'm using the heavy duty kind just because it doesn't rip quite as easily. Um, but, I mean, use what you've got. Uh, there's all sorts of really cool stuff that you can do with tin foil. For example, Miss Tiki made this a couple years ago. This has a backing of cardboard and she secured things to the cardboard and pushed down and made lines and then colored in what was left behind. You can also take tin foil and lay it on something flat and emboss it, which is when you push down with a pencil eraser and like make lines in it. It looks really cool, like what they did to old fashioned armor, like in the time of knights and castles and stuff. That looks really cool. You can also poke, poke holes in it and make really elaborate designs in tin foil. You can do a lot of cool stuff with tin foil. But today what we're doing is making sculptures and we've been having a lot of fun at the library all this week making tin foil sculptures and a shout out to Miss Tiki because she's helped me make a few of these. Um, my two examples before we get started before I show you how to make a basic tin foil sculpture is Miss Tiki here made this super cool little fisherman over here um, and there are some little fish down here too. And over here, this is actually two sculptures kind of put together. I made a little person and a horse and hopefully, yay. Yes, I was afraid the rider would fall off the horse, but it didn't happen. So how do you make these tin foil sculptures? It's super easy. All you have to do is crumple up tin foil. That is all. Um, I'm going to try not to talk and crumple at the same time so that you can hear me. So you start with getting just a rectangle of tin foil. This is where you need the box. Uh, we did learn the hard way that if you unroll more tin foil that you need, it's really hard to re-roll it neatly. None of us were very good at that. And then you want to try to rip it as neatly as you can along the edge. There you go. Now the bigger the piece of tin foil you rip, the bigger your sculpture will be. So. To make a person, what you need are two legs, two arms, a head, and a body. So you're going to strategically rip your tin foil so that you have pieces to make all of those things. And we're gonna start with the legs. So find your middle, your middle's about there. So on one of your short ends here, you're going to rip right up the center just about the middle or not quite the middle just just like that then for the arms and the head you're gonna make two rips and the rips don't have to be exact um, they don't have to be neat um, and so for the next set of rips you're gonna make one about here and one about here and you're gonna go about halfway to the middle. And again, it doesn't have to be exact. So here's rip number one, kind of like that. And here's rip number two, kind of like that. And you can keep it as you go. So there you go. You've made three tears in your paper. Well, tin foil. And then what you're gonna do is you're going to strategically crumple up your tin foil. 
And the trick to the crumpling is that you don't want to scrunch it up super tight right out the gate because you can't really straighten it out again. So start going kind of gently. I like to start with the legs and you start by just sort of smooshing it gently, section by section. So that's my first section. And you want to try to keep your legs kind of long as you go. You also want to try not to rip your tin foil anymore if you can, if you can help it. So just sort of like gently smoosh it up like that. And then onto the arms. Same kind of a thing. Sort of gently smoosh. Just kind of gently smoosh. Now by this point, your middle bit is kind of already wanting to curl up in the middle to make your body. So you can kind of go ahead and let it do that. And sort of fold it in. Oh no, I'm ripping. So making sure my arms are poking out to the sides. And then you got this big floppy bit for the head. You don't have a lot for the head, so you definitely don't want to scrunch the head too much. You want to make a neck, and that part can be narrow because necks are narrow. And then sort of ball up your head. And don't squish it too much. There you go. So, it's a vaguely sort of person-shaped thing. The trick to doing the body is making sure that your two halves overlap each other so he doesn't come open down the middle. That looks a little weird. And then if you want to, you can go through and tighten up the limbs a little bit more. Make his arms and legs a little tighter. If you'd like, you don't have to. And then you can go ahead and start deciding how you want to pose your person. Um, there you go. You can decide how you want to pose your person. You can have your person kicking a soccer ball. You can make your person a tutu or a hat. You can have them holding something or doing something. Um, they don't necessarily stand up super well by themselves. If you're very uh, diligent, you can try to do it, but it doesn't uh, always work without assistance. Some people like to take hot glue and a piece of cardboard and they make little feet for their people and glue them down onto cardboard and they've been able to get them to stand that way in really cool poses and that's pretty awesome just before you use hot glue or super glue make sure you talk to your grown-ups um, or you can have them you know sitting or something like that where it's a little bit easier to get your person to balance but there you go that is how you make a tinfoil person to make an animal is pretty much exactly the same um, just if you are going to make something like a horse I wouldn't I, I would maybe make the legs as long as the, the back legs as long as the front legs. So I would maybe only rip halfway to the middle as opposed to all the way to the middle for all four legs. That's my only advice. And you can also add extra bits of tin foil to make the horse's tail. I actually put a whole big extra strip of tin foil onto the horse's back and scrunched it down. And then I didn't scrunch the part that I left for the tail. And that's how I made that. So have some fun. I would love to see what you make and please share them in the comments below or send them along via email and share what you've done. Thanks guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.